And here we can see it cutting through a tin can. Look how it cuts through this rope. How super! Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, today I've got a, something a little bit special for you guys to take a look at. There we are. My father's old army clasp knife. My father was in the uh, military back in the 1950s doing all sorts of stuff he never spoke about. And um, this was his issue knife. And it's mine now. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so let's have a look then. Well, as you can see, it's a bit of a bruiser. What have we got on it then? Uh, we've got a little loop to hang it on if you need to. Um, we've got the uh, marlin spike here for dealing with knots, rope, and possibly the odd horse's hoof. Um, we've got the blade which comes out rather easily, so it's probably a bit of wear there. <coughs> um, you can see there's a, quite a lot of character on this thing. What else we got? Now this takes a bit more getting out. Oh, oh. Okay. So we've got can opener, bottle opener, I mean, just look how thick this thing is as well. Let's have a look. There we go. Eighth of an inch thick. And as I say, it takes some um, getting back. And the uh, screwdriver, there's a screwdriver on the tip here, but that's broken, as you can see. We'll have a close look at that in a minute too. Um, we got possibly baker light scales here and it's quite heavy too quite very well made obviously all right let's uh, get the old macro lens on we'll have a look at the uh, few bits and pieces on it okay so here we can see where the uh, screwdriver was snapped off so that's had some um, some stick at some point or another and also you can see, if you look here, there's the um, can and bottle opener. And this side is the blade. And you can actually see it's slightly shorter. Now whether this is a uh, wear over the years or a difference in machining between the two tools, I don't know. But I know the knife is a lot easier to open than the can and bottle opener. Now, as I say, I'm not sure whether it's wear and tear on this, but you can barely see when you open the uh, blade up, you can barely see the uh, spring moving at all. There we go, it's dropping back down to lock in again. So it all the way, and it's dropped right down now, look. So whether this is a machine fault or um, wear and tear, I don't know. And if you compare it with the uh, Canon bottle opener, look, Look how far that one comes out. Comes up quite a way, look. And of course it snaps home with some authority too. Looking closer at the can and bottle opener, we can see the markings. We have the uh, government marking here, the little arrow, 1951, which I would imagine is the uh, date of manufacture. The manufacturer, it looks to me like C.H. Thompson Cutlery Limited of Sheffield. Now then, do we have any play in these tools? Let's have a look, try this one first as it's open. No play in that one. As I say, it does open and close with some serious authority there. The knife is very easy to get out. And let's have a look. Well, yes, there is. There is play there, you can probably see that. And I think there's some play in the um, 
Mar Marlin spike as well. That quite a bit of play there on that one. And that one's quite. Um, that locks up quite well too. There's no play in the open position, but as you can see, there's definitely play when it's closed. And the um, little lanyard loop, shall we say, only wants to go that way. He doesn't like coming this way. Hmm. I suppose we better have a look, see what it's like um, cutting stuff, shall we? Oh, not that one, we want the blade. That's better. Right then, try some paper first. I mean, I don't know when the last time this was sharpened. Let's try some paper, see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Not a great deal there then. Nope. Okay, to the bits of bag. Hang on, this is mysterious. There's a note in the bits of bag. Better see what it says, I suppose. Hi Nash, try these zip ties, MC. Zip ties? What zip ties? No, oh, look, zip ties. Excellent, thank you very much. Anyway, we'd better, oops, sorry. I'd better, better start with the um, garden twine first. Here it is, let's have a go. Yep, cut that quite nicely. Right, where's the rope? Uh, here it is, in fact, I've got this rope and there's this little short bit kicking about as well. So I'll tell you what we'll do. In this case, we'll put the two together. See what happens, shall we? See if it's up to it, the old thing. Yep. Look at that. Straight through both of them almost. Um, where's the... Uh, where is it? There's the... Uh, thinner strapping try that oh yeah it chops that up nicely look doesn't do a bad job on that at all really okay try slicing through it piece of cake and the thicker stuff here we are the thicker stuff oh yes yes it likes that as well so yep straight through that um, I think we've got a bit of a uh, Labrador strength dog lead left, so we'll have a go at that, shall we? Yep, didn't do too bad getting through that lot. Now then, where's these um, tie wraps? There's one lot. And here's the other lot. It's got some big ones and some little ones. Let's try a little one, shall we? Don't know if we can cut it as a loop. Well, anyway, let's have a look. Is it any good at tie wrap chopping? Yes, it is. Bigger ones. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll uh... right there. We go. Let's see, we chop through this big one as well. Yep, yeah, piece of cake. Hmm. <laughs> right then. What about the pipe? Um. A smaller pipe then. Excuse me guys. Any good through the pipe or not? No, uh, no, you see it's flattening it, look. It's flattened it. It's not done very well at all with that. So I thought. There we go. Hmm. Right then. Let's get that back in the bag. And then we'll go and chop some cardboard, shall we? Okay, here's the cardboard again. A little bit of chop through that. I should say so. Just about, look. Yeah. Even when it's folded up. Chop that bit off. Yeah. 
Not a bother there then, even for such an old um, for an old knife. Although it is tending to catch in the um, the sharpening choil there a little bit. But yeah, it's not doing too bad. Seen a lot worse. As I say, we are 65 years old there, uh, remember? Right then, tin can, the tool, let's have a look. And there we go, here we go. Yep, rips that open quite nicely then. Make it a bit of a mess around it. But we're getting in there, if we need some grub, in this case, baked beans, we can get into them, just about. Blimey, whoops. Oh dear. Right, let's take a look at a few dimensions and then we'll move on to um, comparisons. Let's have a look what we've got on the overall length of this fellow. Well, it's roughly three and seven eighths inches long. And hey, check this out, look. Almost, but not quite. And it's hmm, an inch and uh, one, two, three, four, five eighths there. Um, all important blade length here. Let's have a look for you. Yeah, roughly two and a half inches. Right then, let's have a look at a few size comparisons then. <clears throat> let's start with my um, new HX Outdoors D153. Um, the San Renmu. Um, what is it? Uh, 913. There we go, that sort of dwarfs it a little bit, doesn't it? Um, speaking of dwarfing stuff, there we go, the mighty Lansky World Legal. Wow, it's always huge, this thing. And we'll have a Oh, I'll tell you, let's get something that's um, something else that's a uh, legal carry here in the UK. My uh, UK PK clone. Right then, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little piece of history here today. This 65-year-old blade is going to be retiring to a very comfortable draw somewhere here in Rathbone Manor. If you did enjoy it please feel free to um, subscribe, click like, dislike, and you can even share it with your friends. And I can now be found on Instagram as well, too. All right then, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming round again. And um, I'll catch you next time. All right then, guys. Laters.